ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವತ್ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಓ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹ ನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಪಾರ್ಥಯ ಪ್ರತಿಬೋಧಿ ಭಗವತ ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಮನುಸಂದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿಣಿ ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವರುಣೇಂದ್ರ ರುದ್ರಮರು ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈ ಸಾಂಗ ಪದಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಸಾಮಗಾ ಧ್ಯಾನಸ್ಥಿತ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಯಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಾಂತ ನಿದುಸುರಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ anybody who has not had a chance to chant in a while satish ji did i think recently yeah rukmini ji okay <laughs> sudha ji will come back to you <laughs> mute <clears throat> so fourth chapter shri bhagavan uvacha ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಉವಾಚ ಇಮಂ ವಿವಸ್ವತೆ ಯೋಗಂ ಇಮಂ ವಿವಸ್ವತೆ ಯೋಗಂ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತವಾನ್ ಅಹಂ ಅವ್ಯಯ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತವಾನ್ ಅಹಂ ಅವ್ಯಯ ವಿವಸ್ವಾನ್ ಮನವೇ ಪ್ರಾಹ ವಿವಸ್ವಾನ್ ಮನವೇ ಪ್ರಾಹ ಮನುರಿಕ್ಷ್ವಾಕ ವೇ ಬ್ರವೀತ್ ಮನುರಿಕ್ಷವಾಕ್ರಪ್ತಮಹತಾ ಯೋಗೋ ನಷ್ಟ ಪರಂತಪ ಯೋಗೋ ನಷ್ಟ ಪರಂತಪ ಸ ಎಂ ಮಯಾತೇದ್ಯ ಸ ಎಂ ಮಯಾತೇದ್ಯ ಯೋಗ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಪುರಾತನ ಯೋಗ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಪುರಾತನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮೇ ಸಖಾಚೇತಿ ಸ 
so we started the fourth chapter so as we said first chapter only creates a context there is no teaching in the first chapter and then uh, second chapter bhagavan krishna unfolded the nature of atma saying that atma cannot be perished it cannot perish it always was it is and always will be and he said many things from 13th shloka till 29th or something he explained the nature of atma and then he completes the second chapter and the teaching is over really second chapter teaching is over then arjuna has a question that you know you are praising knowledge but you are asking me to fight this war i did not follow that so therefore third chapter karma yoga and then the teaching is over third chapter teaching is over and really speaking the first two shlokas that we are doing here in the fourth chapter he is talking about this parampara this teaching this teaching tradition he is talking about he is praising that tradition and uh, so really speaking it's it's a it's a continuation it's a conclusion really speaking think about it the conclusion i have finished teaching everything by the way let me tell you about this teaching tradition is concluding but arjuna is going to ask a question shortly and therefore bhagavad gita continues but between 2 and 3 bhagavad gita is over <coughs> and uh, so there is a question what is the primary teaching of the bhagavad gita well that is not very hard to figure out because at the end of every gita we do say bhagavad gita su upanishad su so that teaching which is taught in the upanishad is what is being taught in the bhagavad gita like that we are told and not only that bhishma when bhishma is dying you know on the last days he is on a bed of arrows and he teaches the pandavas some some more and uh, so in our tradition it's always like that it seems so there is always somebody to teach and we always respect older people and so they are always there for us to always available for us we are never alone so never need to feel that we are alone in our tradition it's always there and so bhishma teaches bhishma stuti it is called and amazing you go from one text to you, you can't say i finished studying bhagavad gita no because there is so much more to study and so there is never any end to this and uh, so bhishma there says kumati maharat atma vidyaya he says in between hey krishna taught you all these things and what did he teach you and he he, he stole he took away aharat took away what did he steal what did he take away kumatim kumatim mati is intellect kumatim is kumati is confused intellect confused intellect am i audible <coughs> okay so kumati confused intellect and so he took away the confused intellect of of everybody all of us and how did he take it away atma vidyaya very clear krishna is very clear krishna taught brahma vidya to you atma vidya to you and so that is the main teaching because sometimes they say what krishna avatar what did krishna accomplish in the krishna avatar suppose we ask some we ask 10 people this question what will they say and uh, oh he is a he is a divine being okay divine being what else and uh, you know at a young age she he sucked the life out of putana in the name of mi- drinking milk he just finished off the rakshasi and while he was still a baby this is amazing and then what then he danced on the lion uh, not the lion what is the serpent kaliya and then he danced and then he, people were afraid and this boy went and he finished off this serpent and uh, like this so many stories are there and then chanura the wrestler he finished off and kamsa what to talk about kamsa ah krishna's job is to kill kamsa that is why he was born well that is not that is not true because in order to kill kamsa 
Bhagavan doesn't have to take avatara, one lightning is enough. Swami Paramahasaranda ji says, one lightning is enough to kill Kamsa. Why should he come born, get jail, born in the jail and then, you know, six brothers and sisters died and seventh died and then eighth and then rain and then this. What's all this? <laughs> is this a joke or what? <laughs> we don't need all this drama. And kill Kamsa, kill Kamsa over. You know, people are dying all the time here, in everywhere, all over the world. So some accident can always happen. Therefore, why did Krishna, why was Krishna born means this parampara to continue the parampara, to demonstrate to everybody that there is something called Brahma Vidya, Atma Vidya. And so uh, that is why, that is the greatness of Krishna Matara, Jagad Guru. We say that, no? Sarvopanishado Gavaha Dogdha Gopala Nandanaha Partho Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta. Uh, Gita Mutam Mahat. So the teaching that is there in the Bhagavad Gita is what is there in the Upanishad. And Krishna Mande Jagat Gurum. So that's the greatness of Krishna here. And uh, so if you look at the 18 chapters, first two chapters summary the entire essence of the Bhagavad Gita. And then uh, the rest of the chapters. Elaboration, elaboration, elaboration. And then last chapter, 18th chapter, summary, conclusion. Just like, just like when you see headline news, a half an hour news program, they're supposed to say these things. They're supposed to say the top headlines are, you know, first minute. They will say all these five different things, 10 different things will be there. And then there was a, there was a, in the White House, there was a riot today morning and we'll tell you more about it. And then, uh, and then, more and more videos and shots and this happened, that happened, what happened and then Trump said this and that and then everybody is eagerly watching and moves on and finally summarize. So today's top headlines. So like that Krishna also seems to have chosen that, that approach and that's always good because while we are listening and while we are even the news and after half an hour if we ask the people, if I ask my father what happened today, I didn't see the news. And he says, he looks at the ceiling, you know, <laughs> what happened? What is the news today? And he used to be good at it. These days, you know, he's not, he's, he's scratching his head. But uh, sometimes we need a recap, a simhava lokanam, as we say in our Sanskrit classes. And uh, <clears throat> so having in the fourth chapter, so there's a slight diversion. He is talking, he's praising Bhagavad Gita. He's praising this, this parampara. Guru Shishya Parampara. And uh, then he's going to talk a little about this Avatara Vada. So what is this Avatara? This idea of Avatara will be introduced here by Sri Krishna himself. And then the teaching will continue. <clears throat> and uh, so we saw here in the first uh, Evam Parampara Prapta. So this knowledge, Yoga, was obtained through this Parampara. And so I am not I am not teaching anything here new, Arjuna. It's been what was taught long ago. Your ancestors also learned the same thing and you are learning the same thing. Oh, by the way, I was the one who taught your ancestors also. You know, this is Krishna. This is trademark Krishna. He throws one, uh, you know, once in a while he does these kinds of things. And so, uh, so nothing, I, I, there is nothing new I'm teaching you. And uh, so unlike, uh, you know, in the modern modern times means you got to prove you're unique, you know. Each one is, there's a pressure to prove you're doing something new. And every company uh, wants to patent things and uh, this is new, that is new. And every person has to prove that they are doing something new. And uh, so like this, even at home, you know, we keep changing things, you know, reorganizing and uh, and we want to we want to we want our home to look different we don't want to move away from the home but uh, we want it to look different so we keep arranging rearranging this and that that we do and so always new stuff people want and uh, but no here krishna is saying it's not new parampara praptam imam rajarshayo viduhu all the kings knew this and so i'm teaching you the same thing and puratana he uses the word and it's pretty it's ancient it's ancient. And uh, 
Swami Paramarthananda Ji gives a very beautiful meaning for the word Vivaswan. Remember the second word in this chapter. Ibam Vivaswate. To Vivaswan I taught. And Swami Ji says, Vivas means Annam. Annam means food. Vivas. So the owner of food, the possessor of food, the possessor of all nourishment to this world is the sun. So look at their definition. So they knew that sun was necessary for the production of food on this earth, which in turn sustains life. They knew all that. And uh, so vivas means annam. And there is another meaning for it. Vivas also means, means a, vas means a covering. Vivas means a, a, a giant covering, a covering of many types, a covering of rays, light rays, a covering of light rays. The object just covers the entire world with its sun's with rays. And so, therefore, he is called Vivaswan. Look at that. Once we know the root of these words, how much meaning we can extract from, from, these, uh, from these words. <clears throat> So, we saw all that. And uh, so, continuing that shloka number 3. We are in shloka number 3. Sa evayam maya tedya yoga fruktaf puratanaha bhakto sime sakha cheti rahasyam kheta duttamam. So, he says, this, this is a nuttamam rahasyam. This is a secret. Rahasyam means secret. Secret. There are two types of secrets. One secret is something that is kept away from us. It's kept away from us. You know, there is somebody who doesn't want to tell you something, you know. And then I'll tell you later. You know, sometimes we tell children, you know, we'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. And uh, children ask, why, why? Please tell me now. Please tell me. So that's a ty one type of secret. So at homes also, these in America, they used to do this. I don't know whether they do it in India or not. So the the secret because her husband's birthday is coming up and so the wife wants to have a surprise birthday party the surprise birthday party has to be on a birthday only it can't be on a different day so there's no surprise about that okay <laughs> but but then there's a surprise birthday party so she plans all these things and then then he comes from work uh, evening six o'clock and then the door opens and then suddenly there are 40 people. Surprise! Surprise. So that's a surprise. Kept away from the person. And so that's one type of secret. But here in this family, something new happened. So they, uh, the, 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 the husband's colleague calls the wife and says, Hey lady, what are you doing? He knows everything that you're planning. He knows everything already. And uh, what's going on? Then the wife says, I see. So then, uh, then, then he, she says, okay, let's shift the date. Let's not keep it on, you know, 15th February. Let's keep it on 16th. Okay. Um, so plans changed. So, but don't tell the less, the, the husband won't know this. So then, uh, so the, uh, Husband comes back and then she, and then he says there's nothing going on. Husband is shocked because he's expecting a big party on 15th of February. Nothing happens. So, secret. And then uh, the family says, happy birthday, dad, etc. And then uh, what shall we do? Shall we go to a Chinese restaurant or uh, this and that? The son is very religious. He says, mom, we have to go to a temple on a birthday. You can't go to a restaurant. Restaurant any day you can go. There is some argument and then finally they decide to do something. And then uh, the next day, party. So like this, this is a, you know, secrets are so important, you know. Sometimes the secret has to be kept, otherwise it doesn't work. And uh, so that's one type of secret. The other type of secret is there, which is, it is staring right in front of you. It's front of you, but you can't recognize it. That's another type of secret. I was trying to think of an example. <clears throat> so I came up with this. You know, this uh, digital drawing, no? Is all this computer generated picture. It's all full of dots, right? 
and uh, how many of you have seen that seen that kind of a picture yeah it looks like uh, most of you have seen that if you have not seen that let me explain what it basically there is a there's a frame there's imagine where there should be a picture really speaking there's no picture it's a bunch of black dots okay that's it it's a bunch of black dots and a white piece of paper imagine that and then they have it on the wall as though it's some kind of a big thing and then you have pictures pictures of your parents your children and uh, you know rama krishna all these uh, you know this uh, tanjore painting is there all these things you have but then here there is a thing and you ask what is this oh you don't know what this is this is a computer generated picture it is it is uh, it is uh, it is this uh, swami narayan temple london huge okay that temple it is but uh, i see a bunch of dots what is this you are telling me this is mahavinarayan temple no you have to you have to you must see it in a particular way then only you can see it so then you stand all of you then the entire family all the guests have come and they stood they are all watching and everybody is watching so what happened i no no don't stare like that you should you should focus like that you should stand back don't tilt your head okay don't tilt my head then no no don't look at the dots don't look at the dots then what should i look at you look beyond the dots beyond the dots means there is a wall behind the dots what how do i look beyond the dots <laughs> i can't look beyond the wall you know i'm not x-ray or something and no no that like that you should just act as though you're looking behind the wall oh act as though you're looking so this is what this is going on and suddenly one person says oh got it dot that i got it i got it so this is a secret and then finally everybody is there you know and times up when are you going to have dinner now wait wait give me five more minutes so this goes on so you can't handle it so the secret is there in front of you but you can't see it this is another type of secret and this vedanta comes in the second type of secret because it's all available out there all our classical music all songs talk about it and virabhai's bhajans talk about it every bhajan talks about it and yet yet it is away from me right that's the kind of secret uh, that rahasyam and uttamam rahasyam also krishna says because it's not an ordinary secret and it's not like this identifying this temple and it's more than that it changes one's life forever <clears throat> and uh, so so this this particular knowledge is unique in that we saw this earlier ascharyavat paschati kaschidena in the second chapter right so verse number 19 or something ascharyavat vadati tathaiva chanya so people look at it as a wonder and uh, then even when one comes to know of it it is still a wonder it's an amazing how did i not know this that is that is also a wonder and yani also wonders about this how come didn't happen how come nobody told me about this also happens so it's not that nobody told him about this and it's always there it's always available to us to know but we were not ready for it and we were we had so many things that we had to do and we were not ready for it and even arjuna <clears throat> arjuna might be thinking why now why now he was busy he was busy all these years even in the forest he had time but he was busy sharpening his swords and mastering his mantras mantra powered arrows and weapons and he was he had his eyes eye sights on duryodhana and 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 the, and the kauravas and so there was no time for uh, he was also a focused man but he was focused on something else and so there was no uh, there was no opportunity for arjuna to know about it and uh, moreover one has to recognize the problem before a solution is given right <clears throat> so recognize the problem so you know that shampoo advertisement i already told you so you can't sell a shampoo to a bald man right and uh, you say the latest shampoo okay latest and greatest 
is beyond all the zinc and all that. So zinc for dandruff, that's all old stuff. Now we are talking 2021, okay? You got to go beyond zinc. And so, latest shampoo. And it's not going to, the bald guy is going to say, okay, great, you talk to her or talk to him, you know, <laughs> that's how it goes. And, uh, you know, a bald person need not have a shampoo. So therefore, when the problem is not understood, when the problem is not clear, then why should I study Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads and Vedanta and all? It doesn't make sense to me. And, uh, well, sometimes the problem becomes clearer only when we study the Shastram. But having said that, still, uh, unless there, there is a need for it, the need is felt, then nobody is going to study. So that opportunity has to arise, which did not happen for, uh, for Arjuna. And uh, here is a very unique situation. And, uh, and the knowledge has to be given only for the person who asks for it, who wants to know, just because of the same reason. And uh, you want to have a shampoo, then you the whole world of shampoos just makes a lot of sense. You, have, you can now choose. But otherwise what? Otherwise, uh, you know, it's like the guy who knocks on your door and says, and he says, who are you? And then he comes in. He says, I have some good news for you. Good news? <laughs> what good news? He says, God has come to your life. God has come to my life? And then he gives you some pamphlets, you know, some booklets and all that. Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness? Yeah, God has come to you. It's great news. And uh, this goes on for a while. Then I tell him, I have some good news for you. I have some great, in fact, I have great news for you. What? Yes, I have great news. You are God. Okay. You are God. You don't have to go and go to God. You are God. What? You, 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 this you, this John, right? You are John, correct? Yes. John is God. John is Jesus. What? This is blasphemy. I did. You can't say John is Jesus. No way. My pastor did not teach me all this. No, you, this is the greatest news. That's why I said, this is the greatest news. You better figure it out. And then he runs away from this place because this is blasphemy. He's been told, the devil, devil is possessed, these kinds of people, and don't listen to these people. So he walks away. So sometimes we got to give it back to them. So... So great news. So great news means what? Unless I want some great news, I don't, I don't benefit from any great news. And uh, so, uh, so here is a unique situation and where Arjuna himself recognized there was a problem. And then Shishyasteham Shadi Maam Tvam Prapannam. What was that? In, uh, in some verse 7, second chapter, right? Verse number 7 or so. Karpanya doshopahata swabhavaha. Hey Krishna, I feel like I am a miser. I just am, feel helpless. I, Arjuna is saying this. And Shishyasteham uh, shadi mamtvam prapannam. I am your student, you teach me. Then it looks like as though Krishna was just waiting for this opportunity. And then the teaching begins. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so it's it's a bit odd because here is a man who is a warrior, who is a Kshatriya, who is a de facto king of the entire country, entire Bharata Varsha, how long, God knows how, how big it was. And then he suddenly says, I'm running away. It is like, you know, we should, we have to imagine what kind of a situation it is. It is like Bill Gates saying, I'm going to quit. What do you mean? You're going to quit being the CEO of Microsoft or what? No. I'm going to quit altogether. Quit. Q-U-I-T. What do you mean, sir? What do you mean by that? This money won't take you anywhere. I've made enough money. I've had it all. I'm going to study Bhagavad Gita. What? What about this empire? Bill Gates. And you're going to, you're going to just relax at home, correct? Study Bhagavad Gita? No. I'm going to pack my bags and go to Coimbatore. What? Where is Coimbatore? Coimbatore is a place in India. There are a lot of sannyasis there and there is another guy called Jayakumar and I want to learn Bhagavad Gita from him. 
say that again um so people don't it is all media kada 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 everybody is following him and then they follow him all the way and then uh, and then he's given up all this pants shirt gone he's wearing a white shirt and a white dhoti and then he comes and then all media so until he, the, uh, the airport he goes then he takes off then coimbatore coim all media is in coimbatore i never watched the news and then suddenly everybody is watching the news what bill gates is coming here to coimbatore bill gates is coming here major everything all business stops and they and they are they're interviewing him and this and that and and the, all this is okay but then the real estate prices of coimbatore keeps rising why because bill gates is here this is a problem we, we suffer all people suffer because the bill gates won't suffer okay and uh, so he comes here and then i have to look for an apartment for him uh, because he's come uh, asking for me you know i can't say no and so this is how it works this is the situation we have to kind of imagine a situation like that and that's uh, arjuna saying i'm not going to fight means this is what it is bill gates saying i won't i quit software that is what it is that is a problem and so so but swami ji does say does make a point that vedanta uh, traditional teachers will not teach just like that and uh, one has to approach uh, with the right attitude and uh, one has to have that shraddha very because it's a very sacred knowledge no doubt in any case simply because somebody is speaking one cannot pick it up just like that one has to be ready for it that's all it's not that the knowledge is difficult and this and that we by protecting by not tell, teaching this to somebody nobody gains anything knowledge is never useful unless it is shared any any knowledge not just this one so everybody is ready to share but then share with whom you know that, that that person has to be there patram has to be there the person who is ready has to be there and that readiness is not there and so swami ji would say vedanta has become popular because swami chimyananda ji came out came to the public then swami dayananda ji came out to the public they started traveling and so it became you know people the so called you know people who are working uh, in companies etc came to know about it and uh, then you know it became a little popular but otherwise uh, you know these days of course online and all that we advertise it on facebook and things like that but uh, that is just to you know create an awareness but really speaking you can't force anybody to come and learn bhagavad gita and uh, but the attitude is so important that shraddha and uh, you know sometimes so i we also when when we conduct courses you know sanskrit classes and things like that bhagavad gita we do ask a question we do ask a few questions and uh, your name address and all that but also why do you want to study bhagavad gita you know i have asked that question because i want to know what is the reason what's the background and uh, uh, is free because therefore i want to attend you know that that should not be the reason <laughs> so what is the reason so just want to assess the genuinity of the interest and uh, somebody you know occasionally i get emails uh, that you know they were interested in studying and many of you joined the classes recently by uh, hearing about it <clears throat> and wanting to join etc and uh, so occasionally i get an email like this i get an email saying i heard you are teaching bhagavad gita please send me the zoom link okay what <laughs> just one email one line please send me the zoom link so now tell me now you are in my position what will you do what will you do so so now i have to have a little fun because we just life is boring you know sometimes we need a little excitement and so we have a little fun with this person so yeah what do we do you know please call me let's talk about it you know where, where are you? you know where are you calling from how did you hear about it you know these kinds of things we can talk so so because this so it's this the sort of attitude with which people approach you know we have to we, we look at it because we can we are not judging each other there's no way there's no need to judge each other so it's like this guy harvard this harvard graduate comes and talks talks to a swami swami i want to learn the vedas and uh, this swami ji immediately understood there is a problem okay so how is he going to understand the vedas uh, there is so much here and uh, 
this attitude itself speaks volumes so he said you know what this vedas and all it's not for it's not for everybody i mean this logic is actually difficult to follow you, do, you don't you know you got a good degree you will get a good job and lead a good life he says no no i heard about the logic uh, in vedanta and all that and i want to uh, i mastered all logic harvard i got a phd and so i will learn this i want to i want to top it all up you know i want the icing in the cake so that's why i've come here he said no i think it's not that easy and um, so i don't want uh, to disappoint you it's not that easy he said no 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 please please i want to learn and uh, you can test me if you want so swami ji says all right uh, says two people two people some of you may know this story okay two people came down the chimney two people came down the chimney and one person's face was dark you know coal dark coal dark black dark and the other person was clean who washes their face so he scratched his head and said swami ji is this a question or what and of course the guy with the dark face washes his face and he says no not like that and look look at this logic the guy with the dark face looks at the guy with the bright face and says everything is okay the guy with the bright face says oh my god the face is dark and so i must wash my face and so he washes his face so the guy with the clean face washes his face oh my god that's very clever that's very clever and then uh, so no no please test me once again i you know i i, I missed this and said okay two people are falling down the chimney came down the chimney one person's face is bright another person's face is dark who washes their face first then swami ji i thought we figured it out already who washes their face first he said of course the guy with the whose face is clean washes his face first no the guy who washes the face uh, uh, his face is clean washes it first then the guy whose face is dark watches the other person and washes his face also and therefore both people wash their face oh yeah that's that's true i didn't think of that please test me once again so two people falling down the chimney who washes their face first then swami ji this is this is you know we figured it out no tell me who washes their face first both people wash their faces no nobody washes their face examine this logic the guy with the dark face looks at the okay the guy with the clean face of course knows the face is dirty but he wonders why the guy with the dark face does not wash his face so therefore he says no need to wash the face therefore he doesn't wash the wash his face so neither of them wash their face yeah uh, that's very clever of you swami ji and uh, then uh, that's why i told you go back to harvard and do to go to america and get get a job he says no 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 i want to i really want to study test me one last time and then swami ji says this he says no not again swami ji please and then no two people what no no not again so swami ji says now you understand the problem okay when two people fall down the chimney how can one person's face be clean another person's face be dirty huh you people ask silly questions wrong questions foolish questions and try to answer foolish questions answers to foolish questions has to be foolish only have to be foolish and therefore you spend a whole life doing all these things now you understand the problem oh guruji i think i i got the problem yeah so that's how it is so simple logic and all that and you know with an attitude these things won't work like that swami ji was trying to say there so so the teaching is unique and uh, and uh, it's neither difficult nor it's easy and it's it's difficult for the one who is not prepared it's easy for the one who is prepared so it's like saying you know how how difficult is algebra how difficult is algebra means what and you approach 
two year old child and talk about addition and subtraction is very difficult for the child but wait a couple of years and then magic happens okay so so that's how it is and uh, so here krishna uses a word look at that he uses a word and uh, he uses a word bhaktosi me sakha cheti okay and uh, you are my devotee bhakta and you are my friend also guys maybe arjuna was uh, may have been thinking now you are my guru you have become my guru all along we were friends right and you have become my guru so my attitude is towards you is different and so i lost a friend and i gained a guru you know when you gain something you lose something so like swami ji gives the swami puja swami ji gives example like marriage is is two people were very good friends until marriage why why you can't be friends after marriage or what no something happens after marriage and then <laughs> some chemistry change or whatever and then uh, friendship seems to be lost and husband and wife and something happens and uh, friendship is lost then what no he is my husband she is my wife why is not your friend or what you know didn't you have a vedic marriage yes we had a vedic marriage saptapadi and all is there didn't you have the maitri homa it's called maitri homa maitri means friendship this fire ritual of friendship it says hey you guys must live like friends for the rest of your life what happened to that oh nobody explained that to us okay good so so maitri so friendship is gone so like so Arj- krishna is saying don't worry hey arjuna don't worry you are my devotee bhakta and you are also my friend that friendship is not lost so it looks like swami ji says looks like krishna is reassuring arjuna don't worry you are still my friend also i am teaching you and i am my, your guru okay fine if you think i am your guru that's okay but i am your friend also so arjuna is doubly blessed and uh, krishna uses the word sakha 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 is a masculine gender not a feminine gender even though it is akaranta akaranta okay and bhakta so interesting bhakta so that means here he is talking as a guru and he is also talking as ishwara krishna is talking as bhagavan paramatma and krishna himself used the word bhakta for arjuna so talking as paramatma and uh, but then but then i think arjuna was not satisfied and uh, he wants to still hear from from krishna little more about his stature as bhagavan as as ishwara as god and so he's going to ask a question later and uh, we'll come to that let's translate this shloka <clears throat> number 3 uh, okay so today adya look at the word in the middle of the first line adya adya means today today comma that same ancient yoga that same ancient yoga puratana yoga puratana yoga first line both words okay that same ancient yoga has been told to you has been told to you te prokta has been told to you okay by me maya because you are my devotee and my friend bhaktosi me sakha cheti bhaktosi me sakha cheti you are my devotee and my friend full stop this is indeed a profound secret this is indeed a profound secret rahasyam hi etad uttamam etad hi rahasyam uttamam rahasyam today 
that same ancient yoga has been told to you by me because you are my devotee and my friend this is indeed a profound secret okay who would like to chant anybody yeah. wasn't chanted in a while okay sukanya there you are Go ahead and unmute yourself. <clears throat> Arjuna Uvacha Arjuna Uvacha Aparam Bhavato Janma Aparam Bhavato Janma Param Janma Vivasvataha Param Janma Vivasvataha Kathame Tadvijaniyam अर्जुन उवाच अर्जुन उवाच अपरम भवतो जन्म अपरम भवतो जन्म परम जन्म विवस्वत परम जन्म विवस्वत कथमेतजानीयाम कथमेतजानीयाद प्रोक्तवा सो क्वेश्चन इन अर्जुन मैंड you and i are contemporaries i know when you were born i know all the story it's all recent only in the last 50 years 100 years these things happened and uh, but you are telling me i taught vivaswan etc etc how do you explain this how do you explain this that is that is arjuna's question and uh, here so shankara says that uh, arjuna knew arjuna knew that krishna was bhagavan okay because <laughs> if he had not known that he would not have chosen krishna during this war and krishna offered two op- options you take my you take my army or you take choose me one of the two and also if you choose me i will not fight okay don't think krishna the greatest warrior chatriya and all that no i am not a great chatriya this and that i will not fight this option was given and arjuna was pretty clear i need krishna on my side on my side very clear so arjuna seems to know something about krishna uh, that he was paramatma like that he knew and uh, but then shankara adds here shankara says here he is not talking as mr krishna when krishna says that imam vivasvate yogam i talk taught this yoga to vivaswan krishna is not talking as mr krishna who was the son of mr vasudeva and mrs devaki no he is talking as ishvara ishvara only ishvara can say that that i existed always and i existed i i will exist all in the future always all that only ishwara can make that statement and so here he is not talking as mr krishna and he is talking about ishwara who initiated this knowledge like that shankara makes that statement <coughs> and so so in the end for as far as the knowledge is concerned it doesn't necessarily matter to us whether krishna was ishvara or whether vyasa presents krishna as bhagavan as jagat guru all those are beautiful things but our knowledge doesn't really depend on those facts but of course we consider bhagavan you know gita gita acharya in fact after studying bhagavad gita we don't call him krishna we call him gita acharya we call him gita acharya his name changes and uh, so we lovingly call him like that and so here is a dialogue between bhagavan and 
Arjuna. So actually, Ishvara Jeeva Samvada. That is how often it is referred to also. Ishvara Jeeva Samvada. A dialogue between Bhagavan, God and, and uh, Jeeva, the human being. That is how it's looked upon as. And uh, so, so Shankara also says that. And uh, then, <clears throat> but here Arjuna wanted to, seems to want to hear from Krishna himself, from the horse's mouth, as they say, and uh, tell me about yourself kind of thing. And so what you said is not clear. So I want to hear more details from you about how you could have taught sun, the, which, which was there in the beginning of the creation. Vashikara, Shankara says, Sargadav. Sargadav means in the beginning of creation. Vivaswan means beginning of creation because there's no creation without sun. And so uh, that the, the, you, Krishna, please explain to me how that is possible. And uh, so <clears throat> So that is the purport of this shloka. And let's see the meaning of the shloka. Arjuna uvaj. Arjunaha uvaj. There must be a visarga there. Visarga drops due to sandhi. Okay. Aparam bhavato janma. Okay. Aparam. Aparam. In Tamil, we have a word called aparam. Aparam. So it means later. Aparam. I'll come. Aparam aray. Means I'll come later. That's the meaning. A colloquial meaning of the word aparam. So here also Arjuna uses the word aparam. Aparam means not that long ago, recent. Bhavato janma, bhavataha janma. Your birth was pretty recent. And uh, whereas Vivaswan, Vivaswan, I know Vivaswan, we do Aditya Namaskara every day, Surya Namaskara every day, I know Vivaswan. And Param janma, Vivaswan's janma was param long ago. Very long ago. And Katha Metad Vijaniya. How are we supposed to understand this? This. Twam Adav Proktavan Iti. Twam, you, Proktavan taught. You taught Adav. Adav means in the beginning. You are the one who taught. How am I supposed to understand this? You know, it's like a child asking a question. So, uh, that is the meaning of this shloka. So, let's see. Arjuna said, Arjuna watch. Okay. Your birth was not so long ago. Bhavataha janma aparam. Bhavataha janma aparam. Asit. You can add the word asit. Was not so long ago. Semicolon. Within brackets, whereas, whereas Vivaswan's birth was a long time ago. Param Janma Vivaswataha. Vivaswataha Janma Param Asit. Vivaswan's birth happened long ago. Full stop. How am I to know? How am I to know? Katham Etad Vijaniyam. How am I to know that you told this Tvam Proktavan Iti uh, within brackets to Vivaswan. It's not mentioned here. You can say to Vivaswan. How am I to know that you told this to Vivaswan in the beginning? Question mark. In the beginning. Adav. Adav. Adi. Adi is the, is the noun. Adav Saptami. Ekavachan. Adav. So your birth was not so long ago. Semicolon. Whereas Vivaswan's birth was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Full stop. How am I to know that you told this to Vivaswan in the beginning? So this question will trigger off a series of a discussion here from Krishna is going to talk about avatara and things like that. 
So this idea of avatars introduced by Krishna in this chapter, which is also a digression from the main teaching, but still, that is that is important in this second chapter, a uh, fourth chapter, which we will see in the next class. Om Swasti Praja Bhyaf Paripala Yantam Nyayena Margena Mahim Mahisha Ha Go Brahman E Pyashubhamas Tunityam Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Pajanya Ha Prithivi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Shobharahita Ha Brahmana Santu Nirbhaya Ha Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina Ha Sarve Santu Niramaya Ha Sarve Bhadra Nipashintu Makas Chit Dukha Bhagavit Asato Ma Sadgamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Amritangamaya Om Pur Namadaf Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachyate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Dameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhjona Maha Hari Om Okay, Mandala, what is this? It is called Mandala, not Mandala. Okay, I didn't follow that. The painting, Guruji. Whatever uh, you explain. 